Yeah, Keenan Alicia, one of the owners of Sweet Potato Sensations here on Losser Road in Detroit, tells me that the Federal Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, was really vital to them in keeping their business going and keeping their staff members paid. It's been seen as a lifeline for so many small businesses across the state and right here in Metro Detroit. But as you'll see, it just scratched the surface. Pies, cookies, cheesecake, cake, ice cream, cobbler, candy yams, muffins, cupcakes, cornbread, pancakes, grits, black eyed pea collard green soup. There's a lot you can make with sweet potatoes. And for more than 30 years, SB Thomas's family has been working to bring Detroiters this root vegetable in all of its delicious forms. As a small family owned business reliant on customers coming into the store or visiting a pop up market, COVID restrictions were a big burn business wise. The PPP was definitely helpful to help us with, you know, paying staff. To me, it was a fairly simple process, long as all your paperwork was buttoned up. Sweet Potato Sensations was granted one of the nearly 180,000 PPP loans approved in our state through the U.S. Small Business Administration. All told, the program shelled out more than $8.4 billion in Michigan. The average loan amount, $42,000. The very first round and allocation of Paycheck Protection Program dollars was bumpy for sure. 91% of Michigan's Small Business Association members took advantage of PPP, according to its president and former Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly, who sees the program overall as pretty successful. Where payroll wasn't a business's largest expense, other programs aimed to fill the holes, like the shuttered venue grant for places like concert halls and the restaurant revitalization fund, which, as we saw locally, faced a big hiccup when the funds ran out before all those approved could get their cash. Have that lifeline thrown to us was exciting. To find out that, that it was going to be rescinded was, was devastating. Big businesses have continuity, continuity plans. They have already uh, put together some thoughts and done risk management. And what if this doesn't work, what will we do? Something Professor Brody Greer says on top of generally having less cash on hand made small businesses especially vulnerable when the pandemic hit. And in general, she says, big businesses are better networked too, whether it's with banks or government agencies who run these programs. Just applying for all the grants and all the opportunities is a lot. If you're like a solopreneur or you're doing things by yourself or you don't have a lot of people to help, it is a job for just like one person to kind of sit and look at what's coming through the pipeline. You heard SB there talk about what a big undertaking finding that aid was. And keep in mind, for small businesses, if you are one of just a handful of workers, you might not have time to dedicate all of your work hours just to finding aid, which is what some of these business owners actually had to do. Now, in June of 2020, the PPP Flexibility Act became a law that aimed to make the program easier for businesses to use. It also expanded it, and that received bipartisan support in Washington, including from several Michigan lawmakers. Rounding out our small business spotlight series tomorrow on the Rebound Detroit, we're going to be talking about what's next, how small businesses are feeling going into the future as they continue to recover. You'll hear from one local popcorn vendor about his optimism level heading into this next chapter. Reporting live this morning in Detroit, Jen Schantz, 7 Action News.